Hey everybody, welcome to Goshen Prepping. We have a list from FEMA and ready.gov to be ready. And although I find these lists to be a little bit more on the short term side, it's still a lot of really good information we can glean from this. Not to mention, I'm gonna put in my information too to help you along the way to make sure that we're always prepared. Even if you're the most professional prepper, you've been doing it your whole life, there's still good information here. So let's jump right into it. First off, recommended items to include in a basic emergency supply kit. And I recommend if you're keeping this in your house or in your apartment, you get a devoted tub that holds a lot of these items just so you have it in one central location. Of course, the most essential, good job, water and non-perishable food for several days. A bare minimum of a gallon per person per day. Bare minimum, we go through times all the time at our house in the middle of nowhere where we run out of electricity, we have no water for our well pump. If I turn my generator on, we would, but you know, we just kind of like leave it off and go through drills of not having water and electricity for days at a time. One gallon per person per day, bare minimum. You wanna make sure you go a lot more than that. I always recommend to get a 55 gallon drum per person per month, might be a little bit easier. Non-perishable food, when you're in these situations and you have like some kind of disaster, maybe a natural disaster, the last thing you wanna do is cook also. So I always recommend lots and lots of canned food, especially if it's canned food like a can of chili. It's a meal in the can and all you have to do is heat it instead of actually cook it per se. And therefore the preparation is down to a minimum and you can still have a decent meal, which helps tremendously with morale. So make sure you have plenty of food. Again, this list is for a few days. I would recommend start off with a few days a week, then go to a month, six months, then a year, and continuously stockpile so that way if an emergency does happen, it's just a little bit of time, you'll be ready. Extra cell phone battery or a charger. Now you can't really get a whole lot of like cell phone batteries per se. You can't change them out like you used to for most modern phones, but you can get like a little battery pack. I actually got this one at Walmart on clearance for less than two bucks. I bought one for all, all the people in our family who has a cell phone. And this will give you at least one good charge on your phone in case your phone dies. But honestly, I recommend you get something like this. And I say like this, this is an Ocotel solar generator. It's a really small one. Ocotel has some bigger ones now. I haven't seen this one for sale in quite a while. But I would recommend you get something like this because that way you can charge up multiple phones. We often use this one to charge up like computers, laptops while we go, or possibly run a fan for like our wood stove. You don't have to have an enormous one, by the way. And Jackery have some smaller ones too. I'll put link, links below for a lot of these, by the way. In, in, in fact, um, when it comes to these, I would recommend getting one of these, but it actually has a solar panel on top. You can get them really inexpensive. I know Walmart has one right now for the holidays. Hopefully you'll still be able to get it. 15 bucks for one of these which will charge your phone and a solar power so that way you continuously charge it that way if you're out of power for a few days. But have something, maybe a small solar generator like a small Jackery or something that I'll link below and that way you can have some power, especially for a fan. There's nothing worse than trying to sleep at night without a fan blowing on you. That's how I am anyway. A battery powered or hand crank radio that can receive NOAA weather radio tone alerts and, and extra batteries for it. And here's one of the ones I have. Again, I'll link it below in case you wanna pick it up. Um, extra batteries for it is great. Now this has an input so you can plug it into like your solar generator. Uh, of course, you can charge it up ahead of time by plugging it in the wall or a USB charger. But it has a solar panel on top, which makes it work really well to be able to keep power going. But this has regular radio, so you can jam, jam to some tunes, has the NOA weather radio, has a flashlight. Um, it has all kinds of different like, cool features and everything on it too. And on top of that, let's say the solar panel hasn't been working. You can see my cord in here. Uh, and now for it, now it's dead and you don't have a like, sunny day, you can actually put regular double A's in it as well. So have one of these. I've got a few of these and make sure you have these available so that way you honestly having yourself cut off from the world without having one of these. Yeah, I completely agree, FEMA. This is something you'll certainly want to have. Oh, and by the way, it's crank power too. Flashlight and extra batteries. Of course, flashlight and extra batteries to go along with it. We have a whole bunch of different types of flashlights though. We have the crank kind, we have the squeeze kind. So that way, if you have no batteries, and I also have rechargeable ones. This one says it's 250,000 lumen. I don't think it's quite that bright, but it is rechargeable. And that's the key for this. It can plug into my solar generator and I don't have to keep looking for batteries or scrambling for batteries when that time comes. But of course we have battery ones too. So have lots of different flashlights, a wide array of power sources. So that way you're always set. A first aid kit, absolutely. Make sure you have all the essentials. A whistle to signal for help. Everybody in our family has one of these little gizmo doodads. It has a whistle, which is really loud. On one side, it has a compass. On the other side, it has a temperature gauge. Like, really don't necessarily need that, but that's okay. It has a flashlight. It's not the most powerful of flashlights, but that's okay. And when you take this apart, this is pretty neat. It has a little magnifying glass. Not to mention, you can use this to start a fire with the sun, which, you know, honestly, 
I always go overboard. And whenever it comes to my family, I always have lots of extra of these devices if I can put it back together again. And that way they're all prepared too. So yeah, have a whistle, but maybe you can have one that you can't get back together again afterwards. A dust mask to help filter contaminated air and plastic sheeting and duct tape to shelter in place. This is great. People don't think about this at all. Your regular hardware store dust mask will work perfectly for this. Have you seen the videos from 9-11? All that dust and debris everywhere. You do not want to be breathing that stuff in. And of course, be able to shelter off your house if you need to or your apartment or whatever with some plastic sheeting and duct tape. Moist towelettes, garbage bags, plastic ties for personal sanitation. Instead of moist towelettes, honestly, we just get a whole bunch of baby wipes. We always have extra packs of those. They're seriously inexpensive compared to the individual wrapped moist towelettes. And then it gives yourself a little bath, makes you feel a lot better. And then some gold bond medicated power powder. That stuff is amazing. You put it on yourself and you feel like you got a shower. That is really good stuff. A non-sparking wrench or pliers to turn off utilities. Oh yeah, actually having a small toolkit with lots of stuff would be advantageous. A can opener if your kit contains canned food. A manual can opener, that is. I like my electric one, but we have lots of the manual kind that you can twist like this, plus we have the military ones too. Local maps, yeah. We're in the age of GPS, but you know, if we see a huge EMP or a CME, something like that, the GPS satellites, which are military satellites, by the way, are probably going down. And with that, I love reading maps and going through the old days. You don't have to go out and buy them. Simply just find the nearest uh, like visitor's bureau near your house, possibly a rest area, and you'll often find maps for your area for free. Then we'll go a little faster for this. Additional items to consider adding to your kit. Extra prescription medications and glasses. And every time I get new glasses, which is pretty much like once a year, I take my old ones, find a nice glasses case to put them in, and that goes into my emergency supply, just in case. Infant formula and diapers, always good to have with lots of babies around. Do not forget your pet food, your pet supplies, water, etc. And I always recommend to have cans of dog food, cat food, pet food, so that way it lasts a lot longer. The dry stuff won't last as long as the canned stuff will. Important family documents such as insurance policies, ID, bank account records, etc. in a portable waterproof container. Yep, I recommend this one right here. This one is fireproof and waterproof, but even more so, it's a really good place to keep all these documents in a nice, safe, dry place in your home. And that way, if you have to evacuate for whatever catastrophe might be coming your way, you can just grab this guy and take it with you and you already have everything all set. Cash and change. I would recommend if possible, maybe a couple hundred bucks in small bills. Emergency reference materials, such as a first aid book or information. I always say as time goes on, try to put together a binder that holds everything you've learned. That way it's in one nice location as well and be able to reference because who knows, power and internet may be gone too. Sleeping bag or warm blankets for each person. Consider additional bedding if you live in a cold place like we do, like Michigan. And having a cold weather sleeping bag that's rated for your area obviously be really great. But something at least for in the house to be able to keep warm. And if not, if you don't have a cold weather one, then you can use your sleeping bag plus layers on top of that. And then worst comes to worst, you can always put a tent up in your living room or on your master bed. So that way you can sleep comfortably and it'll actually help retain heat and keep you warmer during those nights. A complete change of clothing, including a long sleeve shirt, long pants, sturdy shoes, especially additional clothing if you live in a cold weather climate. And for your inner layer, get away from the cotton stuff, guys. It's nice and comfy and soft, but no, cotton's awful. Try to go with some kind of wool, maybe itchy, but helps you stay warmer much better than cotton ever will. A fire extinguisher, I would recommend multiple, by the way, placed around your home. And if you're going to do any type of open flame in your house, maybe a buddy heater, a wood stove, always have a battery-operated carbon monoxide detector just in case. Matches in a waterproof container, lots and lots of matches, and lots and lots of lighters. Feminine supplies, personal hygiene items, I certainly recommend those. I personally am not big on hand sanitizer. I'd rather have lots and lots of soap. Mess kits, paper cups, paper plates, disposable utensils, paper towels. Sure, it's a good idea for the fact that you're not going to want to build it to or even have the ability possibly to wash dishes. So have stuff that's disposable just in case. Paper and pencil in case you need to leave notes. This is often overlooked. And finally, books, games, puzzles, and other activities for children. No, not just for children, but games, at least a deck of cards for adults because you're going to be sitting there possibly listening to your little radio for music, and that's the only thing you're going to have. No, you need to be able to find a way to occupy your time. So lots of items. I honestly say, good job, FEMA. There's obviously things we could add to this list. Put it in the comments below if you certainly think we should add more stuff to that. But at the very least, make this list yourself and check it off and make sure you go through all those things to have it just in case, at least for short term. But this is a perfect place to start, and then you can start adding on from there for long term. Thanks for watching.